There are four key ways that you probably aren't taking advantage of ChatGPT right now. ChatGPT has a host of tools that can all interplay well with each other. We have DALI, we've got O1 with advanced reasoning, we've got GPT-4.0 with Canvas, and with custom GPTs, everything just got personalized. So in this short webinar, I'm going to break down all of the key things that OpenAI talks about and how you can actually use them to supercharge your workflow and your business. Now, one of the first things that you do actually have that most people don't realize is you actually have advanced data analysis in ChatGPT. Most people don't take advantage of this feature and it's something that more people need to realize is absolutely incredible when combined with your own data. Oh is really important for marketers is understanding our audiences. So the first thing I want to do is actually go through and I'm going to actually uh, go right into ChatGPT and I'm going to jump into my Google Drive. Uh, and I have a whole bunch of different files in my Google Drive. But what I actually want to look at is people registered for this webinar. So if I'm going to build a webinar from scratch. I need to know who is coming from this webinar today. So I'm going to click on this ticket registration CSV. I'm going to select this right here and I'm going to add this from my Google Drive. And I actually can like uh, write a prompt here. So I did some pre-prompts ahead of time. And what I wanted to do is use um, a, a different Python code right through, kind of look at who's registered and tell me the top 10 most frequent job titles of attendees. And I've given a, a few, some context here, no title, uh, no response and so forth. Uh, just making sure it's giving me kind of the top 10 titles. So let's go ahead and run this. So it's analyzing here uh, and great. You can see here the top 10 most frequent job titles. Uh, no surprise, we have a lot of marketers on here, directors, heads of marketing, CMOs. Um, so I actually wanna turn it over to uh, Allison for a second, um, because I wanna pull up the Python code and kind of just show you what happened here. Yeah, so what you're seeing here is this ChatGPT data analysis feature. So as you saw, Dane could easily upload and easily kind of scroll through the file in the conversation. And then what's happening in the background is the model is actually writing and then executing this Python code that you can then open up, kind of see the analysis if you want to. And so again, you don't have to know how to code, you don't have to be technical to do this, but it is a nice way to just kind of check the work that was done by ChatGPT. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to close this out. So next thing I want to do is think about, uh, I know we have a lot of marketers. What do marketers care about? So the next one here might be small, but I think it's pretty significant. You can actually use your own branded color scheme. Just input that as an image, whatever your brand might be. And then ChatGPT can take your existing data and format that into something that is on brand with your colors. The first time I saw this, I was actually pretty shocked because I didn't know it had this ability. So you might want to take a look at this one for those of you out there who are in marketing. So I'm going to go back into ChatGPT. I'm going to attach another file here. Let me add this from our Google Drive. And basically what I did was I pulled in our most common marketing use cases. So we've actually, you know, surveyed you know, hundreds of our customers and looked at how they're using marketing. We've actually pulled out all uh, personally identifying information, but we can actually have it do a quick analysis. I'm going to drop in a, a prompt here. Can you visualize accounts of different use cases based on the different types of columns? Please add all those mentions together. So I'm going to run this. You can see it's analyzing and looking at the data. It's looking at different use cases, different impact. And when I actually push this live, yep, there we go. So we have a great chart of all the different types of use cases. So Allison, you want to share like what happened in the back end there? Yeah, absolutely. So again, just like we saw with data analysis at the beginning there, there's some Python code that's being written and then run. And then we're able to really easily create this visualization here on screen. Um, now, one other thing that's really neat about this chart that popped up is Dane can actually make it interactive if he wants to. So Dane, if you're able to go up to that little mouse icon on the graph there, and then just kind of click that at the top, then Dane can actually hover over and actually see the data and see some information about each of these use cases. And then what's neat too is we can customize it a little bit too. So Dane, I'm feeling the color pink today. I don't know about you, but if you click that filter, maybe we can change that to the hot pink there on screen. Perfect. And then you can obviously download this and share it into any sort of PowerPoint deck or visualization you want to put it. Awesome. That's very cool. Um, uh, one second. I just want to check with our quick technical team. Can everyone hear me as we're, we're going through here? Okay, cool. We're, we are good. I got one hand raised about uh, sound costume, but it sounds like everyone is lined up. Uh, so this is great. Um, so uh, you can see the different use cases and the different content in pink. Um, but, you know, this doesn't really fit with our brand guidelines. So while I, I love uh, pink, uh, you know, uh, Allison loves pink, uh, we want to create this in a way that actually fits our brand guidelines. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go through and I'm going to message you, I'm going to attach a file. And what I'm doing is actually, and this is like blows me away, I'm just going to actually bring in an image uh, from our brand guidelines. Uh, and this is just a picture 
of our content. And I, I dropped this prompt in here. Now, basically what I'm asking is, can you change the colors in the visualization flow to the same color scheme in this image? So I didn't need to go and pull our brand guidelines. I didn't need to ask a designer. I just dropped an image in that I know it's with our brand. And I'm asking it to customize the chart based on this uh, image as well. So here you can see it's analyzing, it's kind of working on it. Uh, and there we go. There we have our new chart that we just created that has been customized based on use cases and it's done right in the colors of the brand guidelines. So it's taking that image I've done and just had that match into the brand guidelines. So, you know, this always kind of blows me. Now, this next one is actually a really small one, but it is one that is constantly overlooked. So for those of you guys that generate images with AI, Oftentimes, the images from DALI 3 might not be exactly what you want. That's where they have inpainting, which is where you can paint inside of that image and fix whatever went wrong with AI to create, once again, unbranded visuals for whatever campaign you might be working with. I might create an image for the landing page. Uh, and so basically, we're going to go back to ChatGPT. We're going to go to 4 and We're going to start with, you know, a prompt right here. Uh, I, I pre-wrote this prompt, uh, you know, kind of a little bit my own personal design style, but I love vintage computers uh, and I love kind of having that retro look. I think there's something kind of very timely and, and kind of, um, you know, really uh, exciting about kind of the vintage photography. So I wrote this prompt and let's see what happens when I kind of generate this here in Dolly and it's creating this image uh, as well. Okay, cool. So I have this cool uh, advertisement. It's done it to the specifications that I want for my landing page, which is great. Uh, and let me know if you want any more details. Um, now, unfortunately, one thing I feel like is missing is we have this blank screen, right? We want this to feel active and alive, and not just have a blank screen. So let's go ahead and kind of edit this. Um, so what I'm going to actually do is you can look up on the top and you see uh, some different type commands. You can you cross out this, you can download this image, but you see this paintbrush. And this is like a, a very super tool. This is always makes me giddy playing with this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the paintbrush and I'm actually going to select the screen. So let's get started. So I'm kind of moving along the screen. I'm winding it out in blue. Cool. So here I've selected the screen and kind of done this in real time. And now I can go back to ChatGPT and I can prompt what I actually want on that area I just selected. So I'm going to go back into ChatGPT. I'm going to write a quick prompt. Can you add a chart here? We've shown a lot of charts. Uh, it's, it's analyzing and scanning. I think this would be really cool. It'll fit with the rest of the content we have for the webinar. Uh, here's the updated image and boom, right there. We have a new updated image. You can see the area I selected. It added kind of a retro chart. It kept in with the themes, remembering kind of the original prompt to add this uh, chart uh, as well. Uh, so pretty powerful way that we can kind of do design right here in chat, chat you. Now the next one, I think this is a little bit more advanced, but it is advanced in a way that is super simple. So you can take all of the data that you do want and you can present it on your own landing page that actually looks pretty comprehensive. I didn't know that the comprehensiveness of this tool was that great, but being able to create your own landing pages with seconds after having a long winded chat with ChatGPT was something that I thought it couldn't do. I knew it could do some code, but this just goes to show you how far ChatGPT he has come. All right. Now I finally want to get to the prototype for our design and build out the registration. I'm going to upload that picture into our template. Uh, so let me go back here. Let me attach this file, uh, upload from my computer. Um, okay. So now I need to create the registration page. Um, this is something that, that always, again, kind of blows me away when I, I do this is instead of kind of like thinking about the code or pulling this from a different website or asking a designer for help, what I have essentially done here in the back end is I've gone to our previous finance webinar. I've just taken a screenshot of the web page. I've uploaded that screenshot here. And basically what I'm going to ask and do is basically create a new website based on the screenshot of the previous image. And here you can see I'm, I'm giving that prompt. I just pre prompt it. Can you make this image into HTML so I can turn this into a website? All right. Cool. Uh, so we're back in Canvas and you can see uh, the web page being created. So let me turn over to Allison a little bit to kind of share what happened right here. Yeah, absolutely. So basically what happened is Dane there uploaded the image, ChatGPT used vision to kind of identify what's in there and then used its coding capabilities to actually write the HTML. And so what I love about this is you don't have to be a technical person to even start generating this. Just taking that image and uploading it into ChatGPT can get you started. Um, and I think Dane here, let's, let's show a little bit about how we can customize. So we can ask it here to provide some comments just like we did for kind of the writing example and if when he clicks send here it's actually going to comment out and recognize those places where we may want to change the title or the speakers um, and I think the easiest one to probably change for now is probably the title let's change it to marketing yeah. all right we can go right and just write marketing uh cool 
Um, so super easy way you can go through. Um, you could actually go through, look at all the highlights, go one by one, update these as well. Uh, you could just ask ChatGPT to say, hey, I'm doing this webinar for marketing. You can drop in the, the obviously description and have it update the whole thing for you at once based on the, the content as well. So uh, we actually went ahead and did that. We created a landing page. So we want to kind of show you kind of what this kind of final result uh, looks like as we get to this point. Okay, cool. So we have our landing page. We have the image that we created here. We have Allison and I uh, as well here. Uh, so you see what we just did. We uh, basically used that code to create a landing page. This isn't perfect. Um, this is something we probably want to give to our design team. You know, I wouldn't want that that landing that image formatted kind of in that corner there. But something really easy where we're giving a lot of assets, content, ideas, templates, and something that they can go through and kind of put that last five percent of polish on and make this great uh, for our webinar. Um, so we just showed you a, a lot of different ways you can use marketing. I hope you appreciate it. Uh, a little bit of an unconventional kind of uh, demonstration here and kind of straight jumping into the demo. But I think this is really powerful. Again, AI is something you want to experience and get your hands on it and play with. And there's so many different use cases for how you can use AI. You just saw how we did content generation, but so much more than that. Design, research, coding, data analysis, automation, and translation. Uh, everything other than really kind of voice, which we'll actually show you a little bit later. Fascinating for the 